Ilara Valley in the Cappadocia region of Turkey is actually a gorge with a depth of approximately 100 meters, formed by the Melendes River thousands of years ago. It extends from Ilara village to Selima Monastery, a distance of approximately 14 kilometers. There are four entrances to the valley. The first one is at the start in Ilara village. The second one opens to the fourth kilometer and it is the most popular entrance, leading down more than 300 steps to the valley. The third entrance is Belisirma village, located in the middle of the valley. If you visit by car as we did, this is the best spot to park. The last entrance is at the end at Salima Monastery. Some of the trekking tours which walk the whole valley start from this end. The best part of the valley is the first 7 kilometers from Ilara village until Belasirma. Plentiful water along the river and protection in the cliffs made it an ideal home for early settlers. The water level in the river has reduced now and a stream flows gently through the valley. As the gorge is made of the same soft volcanic rock found throughout Cappadocia, the people made their dwellings by burrowing into the cliffs. It is believed that the valley housed more than 4,000 dwellings and 100 cave churches. Around 80,000 people once lived in Ilara Valley. Of the few cave churches open to the public, we had shortlisted three that we wished to explore. As we had parked our car at Belisirma and entered the valley from there, the first church that we encountered was the Church of St. George, set 50 meters up above the valley floor in the upper part of the valley and a short climb up some steep steps. Before entering the church, we spent a few minutes admiring the panoramic view of the valley that the higher ground provided. Far off in the distance, a village was clearly visible. Above the entrance, a fresco features St. George slaying a three-headed serpent dragon but it is so damaged that only two heads of the serpent are clearly visible. The collapsed apse of the church is now used as an entrance. There are graves on the floor as well as in the niches. Several of the paintings have been damaged. In one of the paintings, Jesus has been depicted in white with rays issuing from his figure. Here Christ is seen with a halo around his head, surrounded by angels. The church has paintings in the Byzantine style, but unfortunately they have been damaged and several figures have the eyes gouged out. We descended to the valley floor and walked on. When it was time for a break, we stopped at a restaurant with shaded seating areas constructed on stilts over the stream. The chai and gozleme we had there were some of the best we tasted. The beautiful surroundings, with the quacking of ducks, the gurgling of the stream and a gentle breeze may have contributed to enhancing the experience. <laughs> After crossing a small footbridge, we reached the Church of the Snakes or the Serpent Church. This church is famed for its frescoes depicting sinners suffering for their wrongs but they are now badly damaged. It has a beautiful apse. The barrel vaulted chamber shows figures painted in bright colors in the Cappadocia style. Adjacent to this room is a deep burial chamber. We crossed back and reached the Jacinth Church. This is a monastery church with two floors, a church at the ground level with a barrel vaulted room above that that can be reached by stairs. The facade is divided into five bays. Frescoes in the church date back to the 10th and 12th centuries and are typically Byzantine. As we walked back to where we had left our car, we passed waste bins that have been placed at frequent intervals throughout the valley. We were impressed not only by the beauty but by the cleanliness of the place as well. <laughs> 